Hi, and welcome to RetroRec. Today we are going to take a look at the newest firmware update for the Pico Mem from Freddy V. He made a new revision of the firmware at May 28th, and he gave us a few very nice things to have, and I will take you through those changes today. In my last and first video about the PicoMem, I was using my Schneider Euro PC2, and that worked just perfectly. So uh, just to try something else, uh, we are going to use my Amstrad PPC640 for this video. I have connected the CGA output to the MCE to HDMI that uh, I got from Serda Shop. So now we can look at it on this HD monitor. So, just booting up with the new firmware, we can see some new changes. As before, we can see that uh, it says which version it's using. So this is May 28th. Uh, it also tells us the ROM address. But here we have the first new change in this firmware really revision. In earlier versions of the firmware, we had to choose when we downloaded it if we wanted D00 or E00. Now we can change this on or in the config file on the SD card. So just by editing the config file on the SD card, we can now choose which ROM address we want to use. So that's a big improvement. It tells us it's using port 2A0, interrupt 7, and the boot count. It tells us that the memory on the PicoMem is OK. It tells us that the micro SD card is OK. That is good to know. USB is OK, and the config file is OK. And this next one I really like. That is Wi-Fi information. It tells us that we are now connected to the Wi-Fi called DEH and the signal strength is minus 69 decibel. This is very good to know. I've had problems earlier and I didn't know what it, was it the signal strength, was it something else. Now we can see the signal strength. Especially if you put this uh, Pico Mem into a metal uh, case that a lot of old retro computers they are using metal cases, thick metal cases, then it's good to know to see the signal strength and you will see straight away if that is the issue that causing the problem. Another new thing with this firmware update regarding the signal strength is that if it disconnects due to uh, yeah, something wrong with the Wi-Fi connection, it will retry every fifth second. So that is a good thing. So let's uh, enter the BIOS. Here we are. It uh, gives us some information. It says system memory, floppy drives, hard drives, and the Pico Mem IRQ. So these are new information that basically tells us some more about how this system is before we have added more memory from the Pico Mem. So this system comes with 640 kilobytes of memory. It has two floppy drives and it has zero hard drives. So it's all correct information. If we go back to the firmware revision history and take a look at the changes, we will see that the first changes is Wi-Fi connection status detection and display by pressing left shift plus control plus F1. And that should uh, give us uh, more information on, on the Wi-Fi TXT file, if something is wrong with that. Uh, something wrong with the SID, password, signal strength. So this function key works from DOS. So let's uh, press shift control F1. And voila, we get the same information as we did when we booted the computer. As far as I know, we can press uh, shift Control f one uh, anytime we like to check the status. So while talking about shortcuts from DOS, 
another very neat shortcut. It's not a new one, but I'll show it now. It's set uh, change floppies. You might remember we could do that from the BIOS menu, but we can also do it directly from DOS on the fly by pressing Control Shift F2. And here we are, and I can choose a floppy drive, and it is working. That is a great feature. Now I have uh, connected the SD card uh, to this uh, portable computer, and if we look what's on the card, we have uh, two catalogs or directories, uh, one for the floppy images and one for the hard drive images. We have a picomem.cfg, that uh, is a file we will not touch, uh, it's the configuration from the setup that is stored in that file. Then we have the Wi-Fi and the config file. The Wi-Fi and config file are not created for you, so you need to create those yourself, it's just a txt file. And in the wifi.txt, the only two lines I have is the name of the network, the Wi-Fi network, and the password for that network. And in the config file, the only thing I have is BIOS, space, and the memory address where you want the PicoMem ROM to be. That's how easy it is. So what else has uh, Freddy done? Well, he says RAM ROM emulation speed increased. The PicoMem now work on the Book 8088 at 8 megahertz with with out of standard ISA memory timing. I'm not supposed to pretend uh, that I know exactly what that is, but it says something about uh, the bus being out of standard. 250 uh, VS 500 nanoseconds on the memory timings. I don't know what this is, but I know that the Euro PC uh, used nine, just above nine megahertz on the ISA bus speed, and it worked perfectly there. But now it also works on the Book 8088. So good for you that has bought that uh, Book 8088. Also, maybe the largest uh, new thing here is that now you can plug a DAC on the board and you can get AdLib emulation. So let's look at that. If you look here, you will see that I have soldered on a DAC. It cost me like three euros on AliExpress. Uh, took me one minute to solder the five, six uh, pins and just connect that to my speakers. And that is how easy it is. So uh, let's, uh, let's try that. So we are of course testing it with the Planet X3, uh, CJ and tree for AdLib. <laughs> Yeah, that was AdLib. It's uh, that easy. Connect the DAC and you're good to go. So we are back in the setup, in the memory configuration. We see there is a lot of S's there. That means that the 640 kilobytes area is filled up with the memory from the computer itself. We also see some X's here and we'll come back to that. First of all, it says EMS port off. Basically, that means that we will not be using EMS memory. And since it's off, we don't need to give it an address. Next thing we can do is turn uh, PM RAM on. There is only, I think, 128 kilobytes uh, of PM RAM available on the Pico Mem. We will turn that on. We will leave the PS RAM extension off. Uh, the PS RAM extension is the extra memory chip on the Pico Mem card, but not on the Pico itself. So that memory is a bit slower, but we don't need it on an 8088 machine like this. So we'll leave that off. Here it says that the video segment is ignored. 
we don't need to ignore it on this machine. If this was using a VGA card or something more modern, we would ignore the video segment. But when using a CJ monochrome adapter or Hercules, we can safely use this video area here. So we'll turn the ignore video segment to off and we will choose to maximize conventional memory on. So what happens here is that now we will use this memory uh, area here, about 20, 128 kilobytes, I think, uh, to extend the conventional memory. Okay, let's uh, try that. Well, let's uh, press escape. If we pause, we will see that emulated memory is now high and 96 kilobytes. So I was probably wrong when I said 128. And now we have 736 kilobyte of conventional memory. That's not bad at all. And uh, with uh, my config file and autoexec bat, I actually have 650k uh, free as the largest executable file. Not bad at all. Okay, let's uh, go back into the BIOS. One more thing before we leave the memory section. Uh, regarding EMS, there is now a new version of the DOS driver for EMS that gives us four megabytes of EMS RAM instead of the older version that only gave us two megabyte of EMS memory. So the disk menu, nothing actually new here. So uh, it has been covered in my first video. So let's just move on to the audio menu, which is new. And here we have two choices by default they are both set to off, but of course we want to enable audio and we want to enable ad-lib. So by looking at how he has uh, put the choices on the screen, I think that maybe in the future we will have more options down here. For instance, maybe a CMS, maybe Soundblaster, maybe Gus, who knows. And moving to the last menu, here are some changes. One of the changes here are Wi-Fi status. We can now see we are connected to the Wi-Fi and the signal strength is minus 67 decibel, which is okay. We can, as before, choose the network port and IRQ. We now have a new uh, option here, USB host. Basically, it enables the USB. As we can see here, I have connected this micro USB to USB B, I think it's called, the ordinary USB connector. And this uh, you can now use to connect a mouse or a joystick. You can even connect a USB hub here and connect several joysticks or mouse. I don't think there are keyboard support yet, but maybe that will come. Anyway, it's on here. I've turned the joystick off and uh, it, is, it is as easy as you think. You just connect the joystick here and it should work. SD speed and RAM speed, I'm not sure they are not, imp no, it says it's not implemented yet. So we'll just leave that. Every time we enter the other menu, we will get a new and updated signal strength. So just by leaving the menu and going straight back again, we'll actually just saw that the signal strength was adjusted. So that's a nice feature for um, fault seeking. Well, that was uh, all the news I wanted to share with you. And uh, to summarize, the biggest uh, thing in this firmware update is ad-lib support. Also, I really like that you can now use a joystick, you can already use a mouse, and that you now also can see the Wi-Fi connection status. 
the signal strength and that it will retry every fifth second. And uh, with that, uh, I thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, you will probably also like my other videos. So don't forget to subscribe and press that notification bell. And I'll see you next time.